Hi, I'm Father Eric Sundrup, and I'm joined by Father Patty Gilger from America Media, and you are watching Jesuit Autocomplete. What does the Bible say? <laughs> what about both? I know. You make it look okay, good. let's go. And so today's topic is... Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> you don't want to do dun, dun, dun for this. Oh. The Bible. Okay, the Bible. Oh, that's a big, long first question there. Let's see what it is. The Bible. What does the Bible say about homosexuality? Uh, the Bible actually does not say a lot about homosexuality. There are a few instances in scriptures where we have something like the word for homosexuality that comes up at different times. What the Bible is very clear about is that we need to orient our sexualities right towards the same things that God asks us to do so that our sexuality, what the Catholic Church really teaches, is that our sexuality is for a purpose, and it's a dual purpose for unity between partners and for procreation. So it's when those two things are joined together that we have successful acts of sexuality. The, the big problem I have with any Google search that says, the, what does the Bible say? Um, the idea of a sexual orientation is something that's quite foreign at the time of the creation of most of the scriptures. It's not going to treat it the way you or I in 2000 whatever hear the term. Let's see what the next difficult question is. I know, is. What the next the, easy one here. The Bible, what does the Bible say about foreigners? That actually is much easier. <laughs> it's a little more explicit. And that concept is held out through history. Yeah. The Bible is very explicit. Um, it says to Israel as a people and then to the Christian churches, when foreigners are there, we are to welcome them. And that can put us in very difficult positions and be very taxing for us. And it's not to say that we succeed at it all the time. But um, what's the task and what's our objective? It's pretty clear. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? What does this say about what we want to know from the Bible? Yeah. That's, that's... Can the Bible be taken literally? That's a very difficult question. <laughs> um, as for someone, just take it literally. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. The Bible, okay, many people do take the Bible literally. Um, we ought not, however, take the Bible literally. And this is the main reason for that. The Bible itself is a collection of different kinds of written material. For example, if they were meant to be taken literally, there would not be two creation stories in Genesis, which what? there are back to back. So uh, can the Bible be taken literally? Certainly it can be. We ought not to do so because we ought to read each of those different genres in the way that they're intended to be, read, to be read. I think one of the interesting things to be aware of, can the Bible be taken literally? Uh, for, for Catholics, you, you would never want to be reading the Bible as like a manual, a literal manual. Right. You would always read it in the context of the community, in the context of the tradition, in the context of revelation. Mm -hmm. So all of those components and the different ways of understanding a text come into play here. Yeah. Can the Bible be taken seriously? Yes, and it really should be. That does not mean taking it literally. And that, that it's also, the, you're going to have the other extreme, um, where the nothing in it's true. That's not what also we're talking about true. here. Yeah. So, so essentially, you're going to need to get a degree in uh, biblical exegesis. <laughs> uh, that's that's what you expected from a YouTube channel, right? Uh-oh, oh, it's about to reveal two. Oh, no, just go one at a time. One at a time. Can the Bible contradict itself at what level? <laughs> <laughs> Literally or in the sense of truth or revelation? No, we can point out parts of the Bible, specifically like the creation account, where there's two different accounts of creation. Mm -hmm. And are, are those contradicting each other? Mm -hmm. At a literal level, sure, if you try to take Genesis as though it was some kind of scientific manual, mm -hmm. yeah, then that would, seem, that would be a seeming contradiction. But that's not, that, I, don't, I would argue that's not a good way of reading Genesis. It's telling the truth about origins and who we are. In that sense, it doesn't contradict itself. No, can, it, can it contradict itself about the facts of Revelation? No. The Bible itself is oriented in a particular direction that a community and a tradition needs to interpret, but it's oriented towards unity. Because in the Catholic Church, we believe truth is unitive. It comes together. So in that sense, no, the Bible cannot contradict itself. Now, think about it this way, though. In the Bible, there are four different stories about Jesus' life, and different things happen in each of those different stories. We look to the same Jesus. We focus on the same Lord from different perspectives, and it's a gift that we get those different perspectives. We get to see him more holy because of something like that. I want to see you type that answer into Google and see what, <laughs> see what shows up. 
see if that would work. Last but not least, can the Bible be changed? Nope. Nope. <laughs> no, it's done. The Bible is done. Now, are we going to learn new things as time goes on by interacting with those, those texts? Absolutely. So it's not like it's a dead text. It's actually a very alive text. Want all these questions about the Bible. Look, this stuff is so important, and I, I hope people continue to ask really important questions about the Bible. The Bible is coming into the fullness of the revelation that God wanted to give us as we interpret it now. So why are we going to be able to learn new things into the future? Because God is not done revealing God's self even through this same text that does not change. He continues to do so. That's exciting for me. Yeah, the, the, the phrase I often have used is it's, it's like um, it's, our, our, it's our family story. Yeah. You're, and so you can learn about that tradition and that past and everything that's going on there and then use that wisdom in your experience of a God who was alive and talking to your our ancestors and is still alive and talking and working with you. Well, maybe not as much in you as in other people. Well, that just seems unfair. <laughs> <laughs> we do want to thank you for joining us here today. Uh, we hope you've learned something about the Catholic Church and about Christianity and about your own spirituality. And uh, if there are other, other questions that you have, you can look to our own YouTube channel here at America Media. You can subscribe to us and follow us on there. For Father Eric Sundro, I'm Father Patty Gilger. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.